On today's episode of the Infinite Loop Show, we try very, very hard not to mention the iPad. Also, the new Apple TV, a possible new design for the MacBook Pro, and a new iPad! Oh, oh crap, fail. Uh... Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number eight. I am Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coglin. Hi, Casey Coglin. What is up, Mr. Gaines? You know, I have a question. How many episodes do you think it'll be before we not talk about the iPad? Um, I don't think there will be a one. No? See, two years ago, um, <laughs> the iPad entered our lives, and there will never be a day where there won't be another iPad, where there won't be an iPad. <laughs> Maybe it'll be something else. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the eye thing. Yes. <laughs> it's no, just his hand that, that just does stuff for you. <laughs> and, uh, no, that would be Siri. There'd be no hands. It would just oh, be right. voice. <laughs> what is it? I read somebody. Oh, God. Now I can't remember where it was. Um, somebody said today that they asked Siri to call themselves bitch, please. Siri, call me <laughs> bitch, please. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I wish I had Siri so I can try that. You have it. You try it. Oh. Not now. <laughs> you could. Okay, I'll do it later. Do it later. Bitch, please. The directions yeah. you're looking for are... Well, you've seen that Tumblr site, that uh, shitseriesays.tumblr.com? No. It's kind of like uh, goddamnautocrack.com, yeah. but it's all screenshots of Siri conversations, and there's... Tons of um, just mishaps and silly things that people ask, but a lot of them include the nickname people have given themselves, and there's, yeah. I mean, oh. use your imagination, really. Okay. I, all right. Now I'm itching to get the iPhone 5. I'm still <laughs> not going to get a 4S. I refuse. Well, I, yeah. I mean, it's what well, we're maybe six to eight months out. You might as well. I'll deal with it. Yeah. All right, speaking of the iPad, let's just get this stuff out of the way because it's coming out tomorrow. So we might Yay! Talk- God. 8 a.m. tomorrow, local time. Wow. I like iPads. <laughs> I think that was heard around the world. <laughs> so, it, all right, it goes on sale tomorrow at 8 a.m. What I'm a little when conf- your store opens. Yeah, but I'm a little confused about something is that some people are saying that Best Buy is going to sell them at midnight tonight. I hadn't heard that anywhere. I heard that from a couple of people, but I don't know if that's like from one person and then it's sort of spread out to everybody else. And I've been recording podcasts. What? Yeah, that's oh, so- that sounds like something somebody would say just guessing off the cuff and then it just gains momentum because of, you know, being connected to the iPad. But yeah. um, I don't I don't think that's really going to happen. And honestly, Apple has such a you know heavy hand on when they can release stuff when i worked for um best buy Mm -hmm. the first year they went on sale what 5 p.m in the afternoon yeah i they would have loved to have sold them earlier and they had the product in-house the night before you know but you you have to play by Apple's rules, especially being a third-party retailer. Yeah. You know, you're lucky to have the right to sell those iPads. And if you mess that up, you're out of there. Well, all right. So I did a little Google search, and it turns out that it's not Best Buy that's selling them at midnight. It's Walmart. Oh, that actually might be true. Now, why makes them so damn special? Why are they a special snowflake? The only thing I can think of off the cuff is that they're 24 hours. Mm, so are Apple stores some? No, where? New York Who's City. The, really, the Cube? The Cube is a twenty-four hour store, and really? the one in Soho might be, but I'm not sure. But oh, yeah, um, I have no idea. I'm a, um, it says here Walmart, the the world's. This is from San Francisco Chronicle. Mm-hmm. Walmart, the world's largest retailer, will sell a limited number of iPads starting at 12.01 a.m. tomorrow. The Bentonville, Arkansas-based retailer said in an emailed statement today. 
Oh, maybe they only have like maybe a pallet or some or less to that they can allocate before eight a.m. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of kick it off. Yeah. Because they're Walmart, um, Radio Shack. Who else? Um, Sam's Club. Sam's Club. Best There's one buy. other that is new to the on launch date release this year. Like uh, Walmart has been selling the iPad, you know, before this, mm-hmm. as did uh, Sam's Club uh, and Radio Shack and Target. Target. Yes, but they they never got it on launch. Uh, to date, it's only been the Apple Store and Best Buy. Mm-hmm. So, Walmart. not that that means anything, but I mean, we're seeing a way more country is on launch day this time, and mm-hmm. way more retailers having it on at the same time right right so it'll be interesting to see i i'm i've seen some videos i've seen pictures of the differences between the two screens the ipad 2 and the the new ipad mm-hmm. the verge <laughs> had a really good video review of it oh the verge is awesome yeah let's no, give I a woot like... to the verge woot yay they're Josh, doing let um... me... <laughs> stop the Verge is doing what I was hoping that a lot of sites would have done in the last few years. They're just kicking ass and taking names, and we like them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I've been seeing some videos. There's There was a video that came out of Vietnam, which was just like some guy oh. waving an iPad around. Look, look, it's a new iPad. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. That could have been the two. It could have been a piece of cardboard, really. There was a video that came out of Hong Kong, I believe it was, where somebody was actually filming. or nice Filming doing a video from Hong Kong, I believe it was Hong Kong, and showing the um, the, the quality of the camera on the back. Oh, and it I looked didn't see it. really good, yeah. Uh, and then The Verge had one, and then iFixit had their teardown today, yeah. which I looked at. And guess what's in it? What? A gigantic fucking enormous battery. <laughs> that, wasn't it amazing how big this battery is? The battery is, it's more than two-thirds of the innards in mm-hmm. this thing. And it has Insane. to be. Yeah, oh yeah. To it, be getting the same battery life on 4G, mm-hmm. it, it's it's like you've got a really nice screen on a fat, fat battery. Yeah, fat battery. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to rename my iPad to be Fat Battery. <laughs> Oh, Siri's going to start calling me Fat Battery. I can do that. <laughs> Call you fat, ba- fat Battery. I'm sorry, Fat Battery. I can't, <laughs> I can't help you right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it is It is a, a rather large battery. Um, what is it, three, three, uh, 3.7 watts? Um, I, I don't know was. the exact wattage. Yeah, something like that. I didn't write it down. I, I've been recording podcasts all day long today, so it's like read real quick and then move on to the next thing. Mm. Um, uh, uh, well, but it's on iFixit it right now. Yeah, iFixit.com. Again, way to go. They're always like right on top of that. Yeah, yeah, they are. We love them too. Um, and I found this really interesting. I saw this on Cult of Mac today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People bidding. Or really just selling their spot in line on eBay mm-hmm. uh, for you know, in front of Apple stores around the world. Uh, they showed San Francisco, London, a couple others where people stood in line or got in line rather early and then are selling their spots on eBay. And mm-hmm. they have quite a few bids going from anywhere from 100 to 300 bucks. it looks it's just like. ridiculous. By the way, it's 3.78 volts. I don't know why I said watts. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have a degree in physics. Um, Kilojoules, <laughs> gigawatts. <laughs> yeah, how many gigawatts is it? <laughs> you imagine? I don't know where. I, I don't know how I said it. <laughs> Whatever. Does it have uh, a pretty good flux capacitor? Too? <laughs> yeah, that, flux capacitor. Call me flux capacitor. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Doc Brown. Call me Doc Brown. Even better. Mister Spock. It would be great if you could get a uh, a mod for Siri to you know, have different voices, kind of like the Tom Tom GPS. You can oh. get uh, Darth Vader and whatnot. If you could download different voices for Siri, I think you can do that on Android phones for their voiceover. But Android voiceover is just so I, bad; it doesn't I, matter. I would love to get Majel Barrett. Like if if you can collect <laughs> collect her voice from from Star Trek Next Generation, if you can, if you can do that. 
Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, she passed away a few years ago. But if you can f- somehow piece together her voice um, so that she sounds like the Enterprise's computer on your phone, ooh, God, that I would love be, that. That would be pretty awesome. And um, Nichelle Nichols, who did Lieutenant Uhura, that would be a good one, too. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. And Spot, I, w- I would love to hear the letter Nimoy because every everything you get from Siri could be like a report, like a science report. And then, like when <laughs> it's thinking, it can make that sound of the of the viewfinder that he had, bring, 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 and <laughs> yes, sure. yeah, all of all, sure, all of those things, dude. I think it'd be pretty awesome to have like Night Rider as your <laughs> voice. I'm sorry, Michael, I can't do that. <laughs> um. So, yeah, um, iPad coming out tomorrow. Uh, I'm not going to have one, unfortunately. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking about going and standing in line. I don't know. Um, you could. But you're going to have yours tomorrow, right? You <laughs> could. Yeah, let me tell you what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting on my porch waiting for waiting FedEx for to show up. Yeah. Did you get a tracking number yet? Do you know where it is? Yeah, it's in Newark. Oh, so it's pretty close. You should... You'll you'll definitely get it tomorrow. Yeah, unfortunately, a matter of when. Yeah, uh, they said by three o'clock, which means I'll probably wind up getting it at two fifty. Two fifty nine. Yeah, totally. <laughs> the, the last time I had an iPad mailed, um, or or shipped, I should say, I wind up getting it about one thirty in the afternoon on a Saturday mm-hmm. when the, when the i when the first iPad oh. came out, uh-huh. and um, you know, the last one I picked up at South by Southwest last year, so. Um, I don't know when I'm going to... Who, who knows? It, it may show up at 10 o'clock in the morning. And who knows? Yeah, that'll be a nice surprise. It'll be very interesting. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to be riveted. I'm, <laughs> you know, the thing is, I work and I play music, and I'm going to be just... It's going to be dead quiet in here because I'm going to be listening for the doorbell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing playing so that you can hear the doorbell. I, you just set up a, a webcam right outside the door <laughs> so you can just be watching it. Well, I work from home and, and one of the things that I've learned from working from home is listening to what the, the what the cars sound like. I swear to God, I know what the UPS truck sounds like now. Well, it, yeah, the, that's a pretty distinctive sound. Mm-hmm. The big kind of open box truck they drive. Yeah, yeah. So... There's uh, one issue that's coming out from uh, reports about the about the new iPad. And this is also from The Verge. Is that they found that it uh, FaceTime doesn't work over 4G. And yeah, that's kind of it's disappointing. Mm-hmm. Now, when when the uh, iPhone 3 came out, I don't know if it was a three or the three three G, but when they, when they had FaceTime, Steve basically said, "Look." We can't allow FaceTime over um, over 3G because the carriers won't allow it, and oh. it seems like this is happening again. Yeah, um, I I have a link. I don't have it on me, but um, I found it about half an hour ago. Where there was a quote from Steve that said, "The carriers, we have to work with the carriers to make this happen." Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people have been saying, especially oh geez, the Android people have been saying, "Oh, Apple doesn't allow it." Well, Apple doesn't allow FaceTime to work. If you want it to work, you can. If if you want to do video conferencing, there are mm-hmm. other ways that you can do it. You can right, do it's it. not impossible. Right, it's just that FaceTime doesn't allow you to do it. And okay, so maybe that was a deal that Apple had to make with the carriers. But you yeah. can use Skype. You can use uh, Google Plus. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do. Now, this isn't face-to-face, but you can do Ustream Producer. You can do Justin.TV. There are there are video apps that you can use over 3G and 4G. Or, worst case scenario, you can always jailbreak. That's right. <laughs> and then, let, let's get a jailbreak report from Casey. How is your jailbroken phone going? It's fantastic. Now, I've got the best theme in the world Uh uh-huh i saw you sent me a picture of it the other day it's it's nice and minimalist and black and white yeah it looks like uh what is it os7 os6 it looks like system six yeah it's called uh os 86 as Mm. in 1986 right and they they've done the entire theme in 
in that theme. Like, some themes, they'll just do the icons, Mm -hmm. or they'll just do the dock. You know, they won't go all the way to do the dialer and the battery when you charge it up. This has, like, this silly 8-bit battery when I plug it in Mm -hmm. on the screen. Everything's done. It's fantastic. Show it up to the screen again, because I didn't switch over to your camera. That looks pretty good. All right, so I know people listening are going, I can't see it. You've got a picture of this. You posted a picture of this on uh, Twitter, right? I or- believe, yeah. I posted it to Instagram and uh, Google+, Plus, so it should be on either. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, let's, uh, can we stop talking about the iPad for a bit? I guess. Really? Are you disappointed? I, yeah, I'm really torn. Because um, I, I, <laughs> I get paid tomorrow, so I could legitimately just run and get one from the store, even though I didn't pre-order it. it. Or go and stand in line, but I have bills to pay. And Yeah, I know. I could totally be really irresponsible, but I'm trying <laughs> really hard to be an adult and be responsible about this. <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I may do a live unboxing. Who knows? There you eight- should. Well, it's just there. It'll be totally different than the iPad 2 unboxing. Well, not only that, but it'll be totally different than everybody else that does an iPad unboxing. (laughs) That's just it. It's it's like I did it. I did a live unboxing of the first iPad, and and that was great because people were legitimately interested and it was new Mm -hmm. and everything. But now it's like, Mm -hmm. no, look, it's somebody else doing an iPad unboxing. (sighs) You know what I may do? I may do an edited video. Maybe. Maybe. Or like kind of a, just a review. Yeah. Here's some screenshots. Here's the uh, graphics card. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I want to show the difference between you know a couple of things and show what mm-hmm. what like HD movies really look like on it. So. so yeah, that would be good. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. There you go. In other news, Apple stock hit 600 today. That's the fact that their stock is more than an ipad (laughs) cost is pretty fantastic yeah and there are rumors going around that it's going to hit 720 uh dollars before they split before they split and 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 there's really no talk of them splitting so they could just i mean i don't know how high they could really let it go but i don't know because we've spoken about this before there's a point where a stock reaches where it's it's well where it's unreachable to to most people Mm -hmm. you want to invest in a company you want to invest in someone like apple and you can't because the stock costs more than their products Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so what do you do you thought they were elitist before (laughs) (laughs) i remember when the stock was really low like in the 70s or something like that and i was i was talking to my dad i'm like well maybe you should invest in apple and Mm -hmm. they didn't but that was a long time ago. That that was when when Apple itself was almost in the toilet. Yeah, her Apple wouldn't even invest in itself. <laughs> That's right. And, and people were, were saying that Sun was going to buy Apple. Remember those days? Yeah. And there was even talk, I think it was uh, late 80s, 90s, where there's uh, some rumors about Sony buying Apple yeah. even after that. That would have been... Oh, I mean, it would have been interesting for a time if Sony bought Apple, if they were one. But now, it seems like Sony is just having a lot of missteps lately. Mm -hmm. And Apple is just hitting homers out of the park every time. I want Apple to buy Microsoft. Oh, I would love that. They have enough. Somebody was saying they have enough money to buy, what was it, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft? Maybe I'm stretching that. But they could buy a few... Tech companies out of San Francisco, Silicon Valley. There is a, a, a Microsoft fanboy who was saying yesterday that anybody who waits online for, for any kind of product is uh, need, needs to reconsider their lives. And I said, oh, so what, people don't do that for Microsoft products? No, they don't. And he, and he says, no, they don't. don't. Well, no, he, he says, no, they don't. I said, oh, so people weren't doing that for Windows 95 and the Xbox? Mm, Xbox, yeah. Totally shut them up. <laughs> the Xbox is the Xbox is really like the one oddity in Microsoft's catalog. Mm-hmm. You know, where everything is is either a necessity, like Office and Windows. I mean, they're they're more popular products, but 
there's, you know, they're literally like a necessity. Mm -hmm. So the Zoom wasn't, and it was pretty late. Um, but I mean, the Xbox isn't, it might be a necessity now, but, um, you know, it's kind of like a different product way mm -hmm. out there. And it's really been the, one of their more successful products yeah. rivaling Windows and, and Office. That's true. True. I almost choked on a bad product mention <clears throat> when you said the Zoom. <coughs> Sorry. It's all right. Just don't let it happen again. Anyways, this isn't the Microsoft show. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with, with their stock. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to split within a year. They're going to have uh, Well, I mean, okay, maybe they don't have to, but I, I would think they would have to s soon. It's like kind of getting out of control. Yeah, because if they say they have all these things happening during the year, and, True, knowing, yeah. and knowing Apple, they're not going to put out junk. I mean, yeah, I've got a no. you know, on video. I've got a cube behind me. I mean, Aww. every now and then they do have some crappy stuff, but um, I think that they're they're on a roll now. And I could see God. Could you see their stock hitting a thousand at some point? I would. I would say that they would have to. That split would be both really awesome and really sad. I think at the same time. Yeah. But Apple knows what people want. I think that's just, uh, that's they just do. the bottom line. Do not question the they're, overlord. They're, well, I think what they're doing is what Microsoft tried to do for the last several decades. Is that, yeah, they've got the whole office stuff going on, but you want to get to everybody. You want to find that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, you want to get that product that everybody needs. and as much Yeah, as much as the Microsoft fanboys okay. and Android okay. fanboys criticize you know, if the roles were re reversed, they would kill to be in the position that Apple is in. Mm -hmm. They would kill to have that market share and that fan base, I think, that um, Apple has now. I don't think I told this. I think it was this past weekend that this happened. Um, we had some family over, and my brother-in-law went from a BlackBerry to an iPhone because he couldn't send his BlackBerry anymore. My sister is ready to go to an iPhone. My brother-in-law is ready to go to an iPhone because the phone that was given to him by work is this crappy Verizon flip phone, and he hates it, and it never works. <laughs> Jeez, that's horrible. And my mom has been mentioning for two years, two years, that she wants an iPhone. But So apart from that story, my brother-in-law, who, who did buy the iPhone, mm -hmm. this is an interesting story because me as an Apple fan looks at things differently, like from the inside out. I've never looked at right. anything from the outside right. in. So he buys his iPhone. He says he's drank the Kool-Aid and he wants to buy a MacBook Air. Now he now he sees why people love these products and how they yeah. work and, and yeah. everything. And now he wants to get a MacBook Air. I've seen a lot of that, um, especially at my work, where that's like the new gateway drug is the <laughs> iPhone or iPad. Seriously, yeah. you know, and it has, when that's what they, they mean by the halo effect, where it starts with something like an iPod or an iPhone mm -hmm. or now an iPad, and then it moves out from there. Then they want to get the computer to sync it, and then they'll maybe get the Apple TV, and then it just goes and builds out from there. Mm -hmm. So. No, it, I, Apple knew what they were doing. No, definitely. And by making it kind of that walled garden experience where it'll work with other stuff, sure, but it works so much better with other Apple products. Sure. And that experience is just really polished from all angles. <laughs> they, you know, they, I mean, Steve had it right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Siri is... <laughs> <laughs> and somebody's suing over Siri. This is ridiculous. I, yeah, I love this um, article, uh, this story, just because it's so ridiculous. Um, this this man in Brooklyn, um, Frank <laughs> Frank M. Fazio, um, he says he bought his 4S in November and is trying to get a class action suit of people who feel suckered. And this mm -hmm. is what's written up. It says... In many of Apple's television advertisements, individuals are shown using Siri to make appointments, find restaurants, and even learn the guitar chords to classic rock songs or how to tie a tie. In the commercials, all these tasks are done with ease with the assistance of the iPhone 4 as a Siri feature, a represented functionality contrary to the actual operating results 
and performance of Siri. Now, you have an iPhone 4S. Granted, yes. you probably didn't need to tie a tie, but does it work well? You tell me. Um, it depends. It depends on a lot of factors, and really the same can be said about a computer, about anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of electronics don't work as advertised. They work about as well as the user uses them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these things have awesome functionality built in, but if you're not saying the right... And I don't, I don't want to say key phrases because it's not like Siri has a lot of... Uh, she can differentiate with context. Mm -hmm. So it, it, But sometimes there's there's like a trigger way that you have to say something for uh, her to return the results that you want. Mm -hmm. um, but even that will depend on like the time of day. If the servers are getting flooded like around 3 to 6 p.m., mm -hmm. you know... It, Results will vary. Um, signal strength, where you are, mm -hmm. what you're doing at the time. If you're jogging, if there's a wind, if you're in a noisy room, it's not going to work well. I can I can refute his entire thing, and, and not to make excuses for Siri either, but I can refute his entire thing. No, no, one. this is a really retarded lawsuit, and I'm surprised. Well, no, okay, I take that back. I'm not surprised that this lawyer took it up. Well, <laughs> this is like but, a total ambulance chasing lawyer going, yeah, no, yeah, totally. Well, anything works if it's powered. And if your battery dies, you're going to say that, you know, it's, well, that's not really a good analogy. Can you do me a favor? Can you grab your 4S? I want to I try something. There's something in the commercial. Do, do Siri show me the Constellation Orion and just see if it works. Because that's one of the things that was shown in the commercial. Show me the Constellation Orion. And think about that. I can't answer that. I could search the web. <laughs> she was looking for O apostrophe R Y A N. Oh, really? Even though you put it in context and said the constellation Orion. Show me the Orion constellation. There. Let me think about that. I found this for you. That time she got it right and it was okay. spelled right. Okay. The the first time, for some reason, she she was looking for the constellation O apostrophe R Y A N, like a boil or <laughs> hey, <laughs> buddy Ryan. Oh, Ryan! Oh, he's drinking some beer. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, um, it might have been the order that I said it in. Mm -hmm. If I, you know, say the title of the constellation before constellation, I don't know. Um, but little things like that matter. But I mean, if he's, if his whole case is, oh, this is false advertising solely based on the commercials. Mm -hmm. There was a big ordeal when the iPhone first came out, and they were showing the speed mm -hmm. at which you were switching between apps and um, bringing up apps, and the the speed at which apps were returning data. We all knew that those commercials were edited. The oh, yeah. time that it took. You know, I mean, all those apps had in some some lag time in the commercial edited to where it looked like it was much faster. Same with the Siri commercials, where Siri takes a little bit of time to... She's got to go all the way up to a satellite and back down to their server farms on the other side of the U.S. Mm -hmm. and then come all the way back and feed me my information. Sure. If it takes about 10 seconds, freaking... Calm down, all right? She's going to outer space, as Louis C.K. so famously said. She's going to outer space. Um, Siri but I mean, in outer space. If you're so... If you're going to, you know, seriously be so literal with it and look at that, you know, well, shit, I might as well sue Apple because those people in the commercials look pretty damn cool with those iPhones and iPads. And I got it thinking I would look super cool and hot with my iPhone. And now I'm not looking so hot. And the guys just passed me by on the street. I'm going to sue Apple because I'm not getting, you know, more sex with my iPhone or whatever. It's just such a dumb, dumb premise. You know what and, it, and the fact that a guy from the Bronx uh, is bringing this. Brooklyn. I'm sorry. Brooklyn. Fitting. But fitting. Do, do you know what just happened here? What? Casey Rant. 
<laughs> it's our new segment. <laughs> it's our new segment called the Casey Rant. But seriously, I mean, if you think like, oh, I just got this new Mac and it's taken some time to process or it gets hung up when I have a hundred windows open. Mm-hmm. What the hell, Macintosh? <laughs> like... I'm sorry. <laughs> like, if I'm trying to render a couple of 3D graphs and have a yes loop going in terminal and maybe you know a YouTube video and streaming Spotify, and it doesn't do it in the blink of an eye, or it gets really hot and the fans spin up, well, I'm gonna sue Apple because my fans spun up. Watch out, guy from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like. I, it, no, I, I agree with you. He doesn't I, understand w- how technology works. No, and people I, like that, it's just like, really? You're going to blame them for your own stupidity? Well, all right. So, in reality, you've used Siri. Is it, are there times when it is that responsive? Yeah. Okay. And, well, and I mean, okay. So, responsive, again, is kind of relative. What, you, what I just demoed with the second time with the Orion, mm-hmm. it still took about what five to ten seconds to get back to me obviously in the commercial it's faster than that all right the time from which you ask to which you're fed results granted she gets everything right there's still a built-in delay Mm -hmm. but the if you're saying like the times in which she gets it right is few and far between where she's getting things wrong more often than she's getting them right Mm -hmm. i would say that's incorrect unless Mr. Brooklyn is speaking with a heavy, heavy accent, which very well may be the case, or you you know, a mouth, mouthful of cheesesteak or whatever. You know, then that might be a problem. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here I want you to try one more thing for me before we move on. <laughs> In the commercial, uh, somebody—I guess it was a jogger—he was saying, "Like, send somebody a message." So, so tell Siri to send me a test, me- a text message that says something silly just just make something up and tell mike i like max <laughs> and is it working so there's usually with uh, <laughs> maybe that was not I such a good idea uh, michael oh maybe because i said mike and not michael yeah. Um, so usually with the text, there's a few steps built in where you have to first tell her, tell somebody, mm-hmm. and then the na- and then the message, and then she's got to figure out which person you mean based on your contacts. Right. So then you get back to her, um, and so usually within the t- with the text message is a couple of steps. Mm-hmm. And again, that's going to vary depending on how many contacts you have in your address book. Okay. If, you know, you were the only, and I didn't even think about that, um, you're in my address book as Michael and not Mike, so okay. that's going to, again, affect it, but. What about the jogger who says, tell my wife? Like, how how do you assign a tag? So you have to tell her, um, similarly to how you assign yourself mm-hmm. a, uh, a nickname, <laughs> you Rock can God. assign, yeah, right. Uh, you can assign relationships through, but you have to do it through Siri. You can't mm. do it solely, th- like if you go into address book, you can't, there isn't like an, a, a relationship or nickname drop down. Um, you have to do it through Siri and mm. then she remembers. Okay. So if you, if you switch phones or wipe, you know, your preferences, then you have to do all do that all, all over again. again. All right. Mm-hmm. There's no way to like sync nicknames and stuff like that, but, um. Yeah, so that's something that you have to set up prior. I mean, you can do it on the fly, like the first time you say, tell my wife, da 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 And then, like, when she just got back to me and saying, which Mike, she would then get back to me saying, like, who's your wife? I don't know who your wife is. And then you say the name, and then she'll attach that contact card oh, to that relationship. And then from there on, you can say wife, brother, sister, son, daughter, mm-hmm. uncle, you know, whatever. Okay. All right, let's move off of Siri before you blow a head gasket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us about this Marvel AR app. This looks pretty bitchin'. Yeah, so this was a semi-big announcement at uh, South by Southwest this past weekend where Marvel uh, announced that they're making a 
AR app that they're mm. really kind of pushing their digital platform forward, not just with uh, graphic novels and comic books, but really just their whole universe. So they're making this AR app, which is going to incorporate their books, but build in alternate reality um, features mm. so that, you know... Um, your heroes might jump up out of the panels mm-hmm. or show or, you know, be set kind of through the camera in the room that you're in. Uh, is it augmented reality or alternate reality? Augmented, sorry. Okay, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sends you to an alternate reality. <laughs> Crisis of infinite Earths. <laughs> Where Siri works all the time. Yeah, right. No, I'm the czar of the world. Um, <laughs> Uh, Nicole that I do Sith Heads with, she said that this uh, this Marvel panel was just before the Old Republic panel. And she sat oh. through it, and she says that stuff that they were doing was badass. Yeah, so, I didn't see any of the actual demos. I just read um, a couple of pieces on it. Mm-hmm. But, hell, I'm all for... Really, I mean, uh, AR apps are usually... They can they they have a lot of potential and it's kind of frustrating because you think that oh augmented reality oh there's just so much you could probably do or mm. that should be built in and a lot of apps that you know purport to be augmented reality apps only do so little with mm. that platform like they just hang pictures you know <laughs> like yeah. to the geolocation of and radar. you can only see them through the camera and wow it's it's a whole <laughs> new world i'm living in second life suddenly well when i see like a 3d projector come out of my phone where you can like see stuff yeah. in the air then i'll be impressed but but still this stuff looks really impressive and and i'm, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the Check Game Boy is trying to do that now, but it's it's very hokey. Yeah. I don't like it. If Marvel can pull this off and do it on iOS, then I think it'll really kind of open the floodgates for what can be done and, and really set a precedent for AR apps going forward. Mm-hmm. There's a rumor going around, and, and I think this is one of those rumors that's, that's actually real, is that uh, Apple's looking into thinner 15-inch MacBook Pros. So... They're this has been going around for a long time, and and it seems to be gaining momentum just among the fan base mm-hmm. with people who want them more than actual, I guess, hardware designers or people in the know who. Not a lot of talk by people saying like this can be done, and it's just a matter of time. It's just a lot of talk from people who want this to be a thing. Sure. Uh, these are supposed to have Ivy Bridge i5s and i7s, which makes sense. You don't really want to go mm-hmm. to Sandy Bridge at this point because everybody's past that, I think. Yeah, Sandy Bridge is so last week. It's, <laughs> it is. <laughs> but these are supposed to have the form factor closer to an Air than the current MacBook mm-hmm. Pros. And I'm a little concerned about, well, I, I guess if they're putting in i5s and i7s, then they should have solved the heat problem. That's always my biggest issue with these things is, is mm. the heat coming off the CPUs. But I'm guessing also that they're going to have uh, they're they're going to lose the CD DVD drive. Yes. Uh, I don't really use the CD drive very much anymore. I I, I did yeah. you know God I mean I hung on to that thing forever, and mm-hmm. I, I sort of still do because I, I just had to burn a disc for my mom so. Mm, you know, once in a while. So, like the to... one, yeah, the one time you need to do it. So you pull the external out of the drawer, dust it off, and you burn your disc, and then you put it back in the drawer. The rest of the time, another ten months out of the year, and you don't need it. Yeah, you I, know. I think that's what I'm going to have to wind up doing because I have a, um, I've got a FireWire, and I don't know, do I have a USB enclosure? I don't know if I do, but I've got a FireWire enclosure uh, that I use for. Even those are hard getting to, hard to come by. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I think I'm going to have to wind up sticking with like, with just like USB, or, or maybe there will be a Thunderbolt mm-hmm. one at some point. But, um, mm-hmm. God, it's, it's like giving up discs is really hard because, and, and, and there was a, there was an article. I'm just going to segue off for a segment a uh, first second on a tangent mg sigler <laughs> wrote that the apple tv is supposed to get rid of discs and i really don't believe that i think that there there still is a use for discs mm-hmm. in some cases and it would be difficult for me to let go of that but i can 
if I if I think back to how often I've used the disk drive, at least on a laptop, I, I don't think I could give it up on a desktop. I just I use my my no, drive on my it, desktop it, all the time. Yeah, and on a on a desktop, you and I I think it's going to be a long long time until desktops become that thin and small. Mm-hmm. Laptops. By nature, they're still portable mobile devices. So making them thinner, lighter, more portable and mobile, Mm -hmm. great. Desktops aren't really meant to be. They're supposed to sit there. So they're going to be big and heavy, and they can be. And so they're going to have tons of room. You can have, you know, a few disk drives in those for years to come. Sure. Um, But I, I think, and to M.G. Siegler's point, I don't think... I think he's right that Apple is going to push out the optical drive. I mean, push it out of existence like they Mm -hmm. did the floppy drive. That, you know, it's going to be Apple leading the way in that space, but it's not going to be because of the Apple TV. It's going to be because of their their other hardware, the MacBook Pros and eventually the desktops that just aren't going to have that optical drive anymore. It's not going to be because they're... We have iCloud and AirPlay mm-hmm. mirroring that we don't need the drive anymore. They're just going to not be there anymore, and so we'll manage without it. We're already kind of managing without it. Uh, yeah, we are. You know what? I, I, In retrospect, I was thinking maybe what I should have done. Well, I want my mom wanted a DVD of some... I'm, I'm going through our old slides, like family slides. So mm-hmm. even though uh, the, the raw data of the pictures is high resolution... She wanted a DVD. Okay, so I burned her a DVD. I was thinking that what I probably could have done is gone to Best Buy, bought a mm-hmm. two gigabyte USB drive, and just put a uh, a slideshow. Yeah, I just made slideshows for each of the different because because I made a um, separate chapter for each thing. Like you know, here's nineteen whatever, and like whatever year it was, and so. I could have just made separate slideshows and, and could have given her a stick and said, look, discs are dead. Here's your stick. And and you plug it into the USB port. She'd probably call me up saying, which side does it go on? Yeah. But the, the point being is that, did she need a disc? No, yeah. And, I mean, I can kind of see that point where maybe they'll stick around a little bit long. But, I mean... Well, uh, but that's that's kind of silly to think like Apple's going to keep them around because the older generation isn't used to anything else or they don't know anything else. Apple and technology as a whole is going to keep moving forward mm-hmm. as they always do. And so if you still have a use for it because, so like your parents or your aunt and uncles or, you know, older generation, like they don't, they don't know any better really. Mm-hmm. That I mean, that's not really an argument for the the media yeah. or the medium as a whole. Uh, segwaying into our next topic, Ars Technica did a comparison between uh, 1080p on iTunes versus Blu-ray. And they said that because of DRM, they couldn't actually store the movie. So they had to use screenshots, which is fine. So they mm-hmm. took a movie and they did comparisons between the two. And they found that in terms of detail and resolution, Blu-ray was better. Mm-hmm. However, in terms of color representation, Apple lost horribly because what they do is they compress the movie mm. uh, more so than they have to on Blu-ray. Now, figure on Blu-ray, you can take a movie and you you can you can lessen the compression so that it fits on a fifty gigabyte disc, a dual layer mm-hmm. Blu-ray, or you can compress it more and fit it on a twenty-five gigabyte layer. The the problem is that. They're trying to compress it more uh, for streaming. And well, well you, I mean, obviously, yeah. Yeah, it's, but but the the problem that you find is that uh, you get color banding, and what that means mm-hmm. is that instead of getting uh, uh, smooth gradations, and I, I used this example the other day, is that if if you think of a sunset, a sunset a sunset can go from blue to orange, and and you can have a smooth gradation from blue to orange, or you can have these bands where it's it's just like blue for 10% of the top of the picture and then like maybe 5% more orange for the next 10% of the picture and and so these bands look awful and that's what's happening on the blu-ray on the um, I'm sorry the iTunes version which makes the blu-ray 
a better Still value better. for people. Yeah, Blu-ray is a better value for people that collect movies. If you're mm-hmm. a renter, then maybe the iTunes version would be better. But but that's kind of like the uh, the older argument of, of um, records versus CDs or even worse MP3s. Yeah, Isn't it? It's, it's a little different. The re- I'll tell you why it's a little different is because unless you know what to listen for, mm-hmm. I, like I could play you an MP3 and I could play you a twenty four ninety six wave file of the same thing, like a Studio Master. And unless you know what to listen for, you may or may not be able to tell. Whereas with video, your eyes are much more sensitive to, to changes. And I'll bet you that if if I played you a, a poorly compressed video, and a highly, a, 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 I'm sorry, a, a well compressed video and a poorly compressed video, you'd be able to tell the difference immediately. Whereas, you are we assuming the same the same hardware and everything for yes. each experiment, mm-hmm. audio and video? Because I mean, the, yeah, the, the, that the argument can be true for audio, which. If you right, if you don't know what you're listening for, mm. it may not sound different, or it may sound different based on what you're listening to it on. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're listening to it on awesome speakers with great um, cabling, or just you know off an iPad through mm. some earbuds, there's going to be a great difference. Sure, sure. Um, there was there was one um, example when. Um when I was watching, uh, I rented Harry some Harry Potter movies uh, a few months back, and I was watching them on on Apple or, or rather over iTunes. And mm-hmm. back then they're doing 720p. But the resolution has nothing to do with it. It's more about color representation than resolution. I found that their blacks, um, the color black, like in shadows, like it, like like in a dark scene on Blu-ray, you can see again the gradations of gray. Mm-hmm. And uh, the iTunes version had these horrible, like, pixelated colors, and they were dancing around the screen. It just looked really, really bad. And I can't see that anybody would not be able to de- to detect that. And so I'm a little, yeah. I'm not, I'm not convinced that getting movies on on iTunes is for me yet. I'm still a disc person. I'm probably going to be a Blu-ray person for a while because that's just how I am. Yeah, and yeah, and and I think a little bit of that is obviously, you know, going to be preference um, and going to be kind of, I guess, where you are and what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, if if I'm at home with an amazing 7.1 surround sound H- 60 inch HD TV, then. I'm going to be more likely to pop in a Mm Blu-ray if I'm out, you know, if I'm at work or if I'm just out running around and I just want to see like a quick snippet or trailer or something on my iPhone, then I'm going to be okay with that Mm -hmm. that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to be like, no, I'm going to (laughs) wait until I get home and watch this trailer on my big ass TV. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then there are other issues along with that. Whereas, uh, for example, Comcast has that two hundred and was it twenty was it twenty five gigabyte twenty five gigabyte uh, bandwidth cap? I think. It's oh, um, yeah. No, I I don't know. Um, I know they've been um, capping it, but I don't know what the exact. Yeah, I think cap it's twenty five gig per month. So if you watch theoretically ten or fifteen movies, just just from watching the movies, you're a big movie watcher. And you grab a bunch of 1080p movies. That's it for the month. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't include everything else that you do during the month. Yeah, so, no, that that really sucks. But that's Comcast isn't people. that great either. So <laughs> that's it's kind of uh, a given. All right, let's let's skip ahead because we're getting a little late here. Um, you you wrote this? Or did you write this? Or did I write this? I don't remember. Uh, the PayPal you? Oh, uh, yeah. But it's pretty awesome. So PayPal is creating this system, which is supposed to be a competitor to Square, the um, mm-hmm. the instant pay um, device that you put on your iPhone. Um, it's called PayPal here, and it essentially works the same way. Yeah, it looks almost exactly the same. It's a little 
dongle that fits into your headphone jack mm -hmm. on your iPhone or iPad. And so you can swipe through the dongle with your um, form of payment. Mm -hmm. I'm almost more inclined to, I mean, I've been meaning to pay with or pay, play with the Square um, app and, and dongle. I'm almost more inclined to do the PayPal one now because, A, I mean, I already have a PayPal account and card and I'm set up with that. Mm -hmm. And, B, I'm kind of, I don't know, but I would have to guess that the um, Square would still have to take a portion or a kickback because major credit cards charge, mm -hmm. you know, the retailer to, like, take them yeah. you know each um store and retailer and everybody has to pay you know a certain amount every time a mastercard or visa is swiped mm -hmm. or american express heaven forbid but i would think square to deal with that would have to take like a little bit of a chunk out of every uh swipe or every transaction mm -hmm. paypal doesn't necessarily because they kind of do it like almost a backwards way through them but yeah uh, well, they have, they have their own fees as well, but I would think that the PayPal one would be a little bit better. Also, because, I mean, they're they're more established as well, but I don't know. I haven't played with either, so. Well, people I'm have some issues with PayPal. I've been using them for years, and I haven't had a problem with them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just me. It's anecdotal. I, I couldn't tell you. But in, apart from that, PayPal has become established over the years. Right, and, yeah. And so uh, let me just read uh, what it says here is that um, the card reader and the app are free, which I think is great that you don't have to pay for the hardware for the reader. Oh, that's the same with uh, Square. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, because when you're, when you're competing with somebody, you can't compete with free. No. What you can compete yeah. with is the, the uh, percentage that's taken. Right. Now, how much is Square taking? Uh, I don't know. I don't know um, either. Like I said, I've never played with uh, the the Square app. Um, I just know from experience, you know, I know that those credit card companies charge mm -hmm. for every transaction. So I don't, I don't think that there's there's very. <laughs> it is not very likely that Square is just letting is paying that for you. Okay, so it says right on Square's page, two point seven five percent per swipe. For all major credit cards now. Oh, so it's just a flat fee. Yeah, but now now the 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 one from PayPal, PayPal here is two point seven percent, so it's point oh five percent less. In and of itself, doesn't mm. seem like a lot, but it it is a bit of an incentive. I don't know the okay. the economics of this in a whole ecosystem, but mm -hmm. I guess somehow they found a way where they can squeeze out a little bit of a percentage here. However, they said uh, now this is from the Verge. Um, PayPal is giving 1% cash back with their debit card. Mm, so mm -hmm. that's an incentive, that's another incentive there. So people may start moving over to uh, to PayPal here. Yeah, and again, I mean it I suppose it would probably depend on your experience. If you've had a bad experience with PayPal, then you're probably more inclined to go with Square. Mhm. Mm or if you've had a good experience with PayPal, then you're more inclined to probably go with what you know and sure. not Square. And you know the th the thing is that if you're established with Square, I don't see a, a a major incentive to move over to PayPal. Yeah, no, that would be a huge upheaval. So if you're already using Square, you're not going to you're probably not going to see a mass exodus of all, current all, users. Yeah, although it, if it's free, I guess it's really not too harmful to move. <laughs> either i guess it depends on on how loyal you are to one brand or another um mm -hmm. did you all right so this next one i'm going to skip the next one but uh this one about uh, johnny ive did you add this i don't remember if you added it or i did no um but I, i've heard him speak on apple's design and creative process before mm -hmm. um he's he's a lot like steve in the way that he talks mm -hmm. about stuff he's got that same kind of passion and drive and and it's just it's it's always nice to listen and and read you know people who have that level of passion and drive for just anything in life. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, he was talking about the design process, about how products come about, and it's it's actually a short. Um, well, the the um, 
section here on, on Mac rumors is short, but there's a whole Q&A in the London Evening Standard about um, mm-hmm. about Apple's design process, and it's it's rather intriguing of, of, of how they do stuff. And there was one, um, I have to find it, but basically he's saying that if we don't think that it's good for people, we're just not going to make it. It's as simple as that. And my Flash player crashed. Isn't that awesome? That's... Totally like Flash to do that uh, to you. I love Flash. <laughs> Don't you love Flash? Not really. <laughs> oh, God. All right, tell us about Jailbreak Con. So, this kind of seems like a... Well, I mean, it seems like a given. Um, there's, what is it, DEF CON and... Um, oh, now I'm forgetting the other. There's a lot of, like, hack cons and... Um, hack days and, and kind of just meetups and conventions for, um, not, I mean, not like bad hackers, but more like white hat hackers and jailbreakers and, uh, stuff like this. So jailbreak con is just kind of another conference for any and all supporters and users of jailbreaks, mm-hmm. um, to kind of get together, share code. Um, I mean, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I have to ask this. Hmm. Um, the, the people that write, the, the, well, I don't know if you know, because you're more in tune with the jailbreak culture than I am, but other than just writing really cool stuff outside the parameters of what Apple allows, people are people making a ton of money off of this? Off of jailbroken apps? I honestly, I don't know for sure. Mm. I, I mean, you don't hear about it if they are, but... If I had to hazard a guess one way or another, I would say no. Mm. And and here's another thing. Now, Cydia is the the jailbreak store, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. Who's mm-hmm. who's to say that somebody can't come around and just create a better a better store? So you know what? I don't well, like Cydia. I'm going to make a new one. They've kind of tried. Um, there used to be another store called Rock mm-hmm. when um, the iPhone first came out, and they first started jailbreaking it. There were kind of two competing stores in the beginning, Cydia and Rock. Mm. And Rock has uh, been swallowed by uh, Cydia. Okay. Um, I can't tell you when exactly that happened, but it's been a couple of years now. Um, so, I mean, I think it's just kind of, I mean, there's definitely room and another store could spring up overnight. But kind of like the App Store, People go with what they know, and mm-hmm. they go, you know, momentum is a powerful force. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, moving on to apps before we go. <laughs> You're, like, all over this. Tell us about Sparrow. So, funny this should come out this week, because it was literally just last week. I was just throwing my hands up in the air going, I really wish there was Sparrow for the iOS. Why isn't that for iOS? I really would like to see another mail mm-hmm. app that might use rules. Uh, what I, I would really love to see, a mail app for iOS mm-hmm. that I can assign, create and assign rules for my mailbox like I can with the mail app on the desktop, Sparrow, um, Thunderbird, all the desktop mail apps do this. I mean, it's a given. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of send, when mail comes in, you can apply these rules, send them places, have notifications pop up, right. you know, organize your mailbox um, accordingly. And I've been looking and waiting and hoping for one for iOS that'll do just that. So when Sparrow finally showed up this week for iOS, it's a universal app for both the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad, I was like, fuck Finally, I'm so <laughs> awesome. Um, that being said, it does not have rules and does not use rules. Boo. So it's still not the app I'm looking for. <laughs> it's not but, the app you're looking for. No, but I think I'm still going to use it regardless because it's really kind of pretty. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, Tweetbot where it's just a really beautiful, well-designed app. Mm-hmm. It has really kind of neat, that slide um, card <laughs> style uh, nav- navigation. Yeah. And um, in it has, like Tweetbox does, the inline, where you swipe the inline thread and the um, options to deal mm-hmm. with it are right there. So you could like favorite, star, move, delete, 
you know, right in line there. So it's got really nice navigation. It does have better options for moving stuff around and, um, you know, having, uh, you can have more detailed um, signatures for your mailbox, mm -hmm. default mailbox, you know, so there's better options than you have built into settings in the, the built-in mail app, but still not as powerful as I'd like to see a mail app be. I haven't tried it, but from what I've read, there are two main problems with, uh, with Sparrow. Is, uh, the first one is that because iOS is built around the inability to directly add attachments, you have to, if you have a picture, you have to go into f the photo app and then click on the, the arrow to tell it that yeah, you want to email it, yeah. it's going to wind up using the mail app, the in, uh, um, the default mail app anyway. So there's that problem, and then the other problem is push. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the system won't do push on your mail, and there's uh, apparently a workaround for that using Boxcar. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Boxcar. It's Boxcar. It's it's nice that it kind of consolidates all your notifications into one place, but a notification center does that anyways mm -hmm. and b i have to go into another app to look at it where notification center is like a drop down right. overlay no matter where i am and it's still boxcar is still kind of limited like mm -hmm. i think there might even be more that you can do with the notification center than you can with boxcar i would just rather like to see apple make a better mail app because as good as it is and i i don't mm -hmm. have any serious problems with it yeah, it, it can work a little better. Uh, the entire walled garden where you can't access the file system directly, I don't like that. I would I would like the ability to say, look, I want to... Because this has happened to me several times. I'm in mail, and I'm thinking like the desktop. And I'm typing my email, and then I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm, now it's time to attach the picture. Okay, so I was and, just trying that since you mentioned it because mm -hmm. I run into that all the time. If I'm responding to a uh, message on my phone and it's part of you know a long thread right. of messages and I want to keep that thread intact, if I want to attach something on the phone, I have to leave, yep. go into um, the Photos app, and then hit the action button from within that and start a new thread, essentially. Um, but Sparrow will actually do it from within the mail app so really? if i yeah so if i start a message or i would assume the same would be true to responding to a message um there's a little paper clip icon on the side yeah that from which you can attach something right there within the message okay. within the thread so you don't have to leave i mean i don't mind leaving the app but the problem is that I have to then essentially create a new message or a new thread because mm -hmm. um, it's a completely new thing. Oh, but, that's interesting. Um, so that's one thing that is pretty nice, and I run into that a lot. You're right. Um, hmm. That Sparrow will do. Okay. Well, hmm. I don't know if it's enough to convince me to buy it, but... One of us. One of us. <laughs> I know. It's been getting a lot of traction. I, I understand that, but... Mm, it's it's got to do a lot. It it ha basically has to do everything mail does and more. Yeah. And the lack of push bugs me because I, I look. I don't dip, I don't check my email every ten seconds. It's convenient to have. No, that's why. Yeah, that's why you have push, so you don't have to. <laughs> exactly. There are some people saying, "Well, you don't need push." I mean, how how often do you really need to check your messages? Well, you know what? It's nice that the phone does it for me. So right, I don't, I don't to. need to check my messages, but I like to know when they're coming in or if, the, like, in the back of my head, I'm kind of waiting for somebody to respond mm -hmm. to something and I can kind of keep an eye on it without going refresh, refresh. Yeah. Know. What I would like, and, and Casey and I were talking about this before the show started, is that I would like iOS to work the same way that Mac OS works where you could say, I want this app to be my default mail app. Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to be a while before we see something like that. Maybe iOS seven or eight. I don't think we're going to see that in in um, six. Maybe they are kind of mm. moving faster with implementing features um, that are either from the jailbreak community or other apps that you know are kind of doing it mm -hmm. better. Okay. 
All right, I think we have finished. Yay! <laughs> All right. If you want to contact us, I am Star Mike on Twitter. Casey is at Casey Queso. That's K A C E Y K A S O. The Casey, not the cheese. <laughs> You can email us, email us at the infinite loop show at gmail.com. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, what is it? I always forget. Infinite, infinite loop, loop, loop TV. TV. Okay. <laughs> we're on f- Facebook. We're on Google. Plus. We're on YouTube. We're, we're all up in your interwebs, people. That's right. All right. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye. Bye.